Oh, it's all happening backwards. Okay, so this, this is the general process, okay? So I'm just going to remind you a little bit about this. And I talked about this, right? No? Okay, thank you. Okay, so these are the four steps involved here. Now, it's complicated. And whenever you have something complicated in biology, you've got to try and think, now, why is it like this? You know, why isn't it just simpler and easier and it would be much easier to learn and understand this stuff? Well, often uh, things are done in a complex way in biology because they're solving a difficult problem. And the problem here for bacteria is that they need to synthesize a polymer on the outside of the cell. So in metabolism, you need to put energy in to synthesize macromolecules. But outside the cell, there's no ATP or, you know, biochemical energy. That's the problem. So how does the bacteria get around this? Well, they get around it by synthesizing the precursors, the repeating subunits in the cytoplasm. So the first step is to synthesize, okay, the NAM, NAG, repeating glycan part and then the pentapeptide in the cytoplasm. Now, if you remember, in the mature peptidoglycan molecule, it's a tetrapeptide. There's four amino acids attached to each N-acetylmeramic acid glycan, okay? But it's synthesized first as a pentapeptide. So you need to try and understand why this happens, okay? Why do, it wouldn't it be simpler if it just like, produced the tetrapeptide, right? Why is it doing something complicated like this? Okay, so the repeating subunit synthesized in the cytosol. Then it's going to be transported across the periplasmic across the plasma membrane into the periplasm by bactoprenol, which is a kind of lipid transporter. So it's flipped over, gets to the periplasm. Then once in the periplasm, the NAM, NAG, glycan part will be inserted into the NAM, NAG, NAM, NAG polymer by transglycosidases. And then finally, the cross -link, the peptide crosslinks will be formed by transpeptidases. And the transpeptidases are the site of action of beta-lactam antibiotics. They're competitive inhibitors of the transpeptidases. Vancomycin too, but by not, not competitive inhibitors, they inhibit that step, but by a different mechanism. Okay, so there used to be a good YouTube video about this by uh, on a site on a, or, a, or a, uh, a channel by somebody called Microbiotic, but it doesn't exist anymore. This one is still up there. I think it's a little bit less good, but it, it's okay. And, okay, so beta-lactam antibiotics like penicillin, they're inhibiting pretty much the last step in the synthesis here. But they're still bactericidal. So why is that? One thing you have to realize is that when bacteria are growing, in order for the bacterial cell to get bigger before it divides into two, Bacteria have got to lyse the peptidoglycan layer at the same time as they're synthesizing it, because otherwise this structure is just so solid that the cell can't even expand, right? So if the cell needs, has to, what, is able to grow, it's got to be able to cut the peptidoglycan so that it can push it apart as the cell grows bigger. And that's the role of autolysins that bacteria express in the periplasm, and they break up the peptidoglycan. So when bacteria are growing, that's okay because, you know, the, the peptidoglycan is being cut up a little bit, but then it's also being synthesized. So the net effect is you make more peptidoglycan. But if you inhibit the synthesis step, all you've got left is the activity of the autolysins, and then that's why these bacteria will explode. They'll be killed by the action of these antibiotics. Okay. Penicillin, cephalosporins, vancomycin, okay? All right, so that's a little bit about that. Now, 
Let's have a look at the different steps in the synthesis in more detail. So it starts off by synthesizing, well, you bacteria start off by synthesizing N-astamuramic acid coupled to uridine diphosphate in the cytoplasm and the five amino acids of the pentapeptide get attached to this lactose, lactoyl uh, group, which is at position three of the N-astamuramic acid sugar. So never forget, okay, the peptide part is attached to N to the NAM, okay? N acetamuramic acid, not to the NAG. How can you remember that? The important point is acid. The acid comes from the carboxylate group here on the lactate. So this carboxylate group can be linked to the end terminus of this amino acid, right? And that will make a peptide bond here. Everybody okay with what a peptide bond is? So once you've got the first one, you have peptide bonds here from the, you know, C terminus to N terminus, C terminus to N terminus, all the way around. So N terminal here, C terminal down there, okay? Right. Next step is that this whole thing is going to be connected to bactoprenol. So this is the lipid part. Initially, it's monophosphorylated with the phosphate group here sticking out into the cytoplasm. So after this step, you get bactoprenol pyrophosphate and then NAM and the pentapeptide. So where does this other phosphate group come from? Yeah. Yeah, from the UDP, uridine diphosphate. So you've got like phosphate, phosphate, uridine. So you have like bactoprenol, pyrophosphate, NAM, and what do you get out of here? As uh, you know, once this comes off, what's the other product of this? Yeah, uridine monophosphate, UMP. Okay. Yes. Okay. You could imagine you have like another arrow coming down here like a curved arrow and then UMP will be you know released into the cytosol so that's where this second phosphate group comes from okay so this is also called lipid one in the synthesis of peptidoglycan then the next thing that happens is that you get n glucosamine stuck on the other end of the NAM molecule here so that's it. This is our repeated subunit of peptidoglycan, NAG, NAM, pentapeptide, all attached to bactoprenol diphosphate or pyrophosphate. So that's good. That's step one. Next thing that happens, oh, and this is also called lipid two in the biosynthetic pathway. So the next thing that happens is lipid two is going to be grabbed by a kind of enzyme called a has a flippase activity so it's going to flip the whole thing in the plasma membrane so you know it's inverted it ends up like this so the lipid part of the bactoprenol just stays in the membrane but the nam the nag nam pentapeptide is now in the periplasm so bactoprenol is often called you know the lipid transporter of uh, uh, you know, peptidoglycan subunits. Okay, last two steps are the translycosidation. So translycosidases are going to attach this nam nag dimer to one of the free ends of the nag nam nag nam nag nam polymer. Okay, so they create a glycosidic bond and at the same time they destroy the bond from this phosphate group to the sugar. Okay, so you're destroying one bond, creating a new bond, but that's energetically equal, right? It's, equal, it's, it's balanced, so it doesn't cost any extra energy to do this. Okay, remember 
this bond here, the phosphate, originally came from the UDP. Okay, so spending the energy in this bond occurred before in the cytoplasm because you had UDP to UMP. And that's how you can export the energy content out into the periplasm here. Where you don't have any UDP, ATP, nothing, all right? So that's the triangle dicosidase action. What happens afterwards is that the bactopenol pyrophosphate is reflipped in the membrane, and this regenerates bactopenol phosphate to be used in another round of the synthesis. Okay. And the last step is the action of transpeptidases, which are going to form a peptide bond between the free amine group on the side chain, either of the DAP, diaminopimelic acid, or the L-lysine, and that's going to form a peptide bond with the carboxy terminus of the fourth D-alanine here. So the trans, this is going to be catalyzed by a transpeptidase. So what's going to happen is that in the pentapeptide, you have this peptide bond between the fourth and the fifth D-alanine, that's going to break and be replaced by a peptide bond here. So you get this. And you release one D-alanine molecule into the periplasm that will have to be re-imported into the cytosol. So this reaction also doesn't cost any energy because you form one peptide bond and you break one peptide bond. And that's why bacteria have got to synthesize the precursor as NAG, NAM, and a pentapeptide. Because the fifth amino acid, that's what's carrying the energy you need to make this bond, okay? So that's why the thing is so complicated, because you've got to have some kind of energy within the kind of lipid 2 that can allow the creation of these two types of bonds. And that's why it's so great, it's so clever, I, I, I love it. <laughs>